Hi, I'm Dr. Francis Price, and this is a case of DEMEC, Decimase Membrane Endothelial Keratoplasty combined with cataract surgery. I've just measured the diameter of the cornea to help us judge not only the size of the donor, but to help us be more accurate with our lens power calculation that we'll be placing into the eye. Now, as with standard cataract surgery, we put in some anesthetic agent to help give further anesthesia to the eye, filled the anterior chamber with viscoelastic, and we're now doing an anterior capsulotomy. This is a continuous tear technique where we get a nice round opening in the anterior capsule around the lens. We're now going to separate the cortical material from the edge of the capsule and use ultrasound or phacal emulsification to remove the hard inner part or nucleus of the lens. Aspirations being used to remove the cortical material, the softer outer area. Once again, filling the eye and the capsular bag with viscoelastic. We're now inserting a intraocular lens in the eye. We're using the tree find here to mark the dimensions of where the donor graft's going to go. And then with the eye filled with viscoelastic, we're going in with a reverse Prysinski hook. And we're scoring the area where we want to remove decimase membrane. This is a case of Fuchs dystrophy, so decimase membrane is abnormal, as are the cells for the endothelial cells that are on it. So we've removed those. We're using irrigation and aspiration now to both remove the viscoelastic and then to vacuum it off the back of the cornea so we don't get haze postoperatively. We're placing a medication in the eye to constrict the pupil, making a hole in the lower part of the iris to prevent air block postoperatively that can lead to high pressures or glaucoma. We've just injected the donor tissue into the eye, closed the incision with a suture to minimize the chance of it basically squirting back out of the eye while we try to unfold it. And now with our cannula we're using little bursts to balance salt solution to get it to unfold. We use a slit beam here and you can see that it's curled and if you know what you're looking at you can tell that it's curled the right way. Curled so that the endothelial cells are pointed towards the iris or colored part of the eye and decimase membrane side is pointed towards the patient's cornea. We have an air bubble underneath the donor now and we do it underneath to minimize the contact between the endothelial cells and the underlying iris or lens implant which could lead to damage to those cells. In some cases, doctors will place the air bubble on the top of the donor. We like to place it only underneath it to protect the endothelium. We're now moving it in place by stroking the cornea, and we'll finish up by filling the anterior chamber totally with air, pushing the donor cornea up against the back of the patient's cornea, basically replacing their diseased endothelium for new healthy ones. What I've done there is check the eye by moving my hand back and forth to make sure that the patient could still see light. And that's very important. And you can only do that if the patient's had topical anesthesia. If they've had a block around the eye, then you potentially could overfill it and you would have no way to know.